While a lot of people think that Deontay Wilder is just got his mind set on cheating and making excuses, my understanding is that he acknowledges and knows Tyson Fury cheated, but yet he is definitely preparing for the next fight. He is preparing for it in court. So those are the words of Fanon, okay? Um, and Fanon states that Deontay Wilder is looking forward or looking towards the future, towards um, another fight with, with some other opponent, which is a good thing. And like you just heard him say, he is looking forward to court, okay? So uh, let's talk about court for a minute. Now, we had a mediation, and then from the mediation, we had an arbitration. So they both consist of money, to my understanding. From the sources that I've read, they are talking specifically, or he is talking specifically about money. And the money is coming from the fact that Tyson Fury did not give him the third fight like they signed a contract for. Nothing more, nothing less. There won't be a WBC belt stripped and none of that shit. Because had that happened, it would have already happened. Counterpunch. Okay, so don't believe everything you hear. You have to really weed out the belief versus the fact. Okay, that's what well, that's a lot of times when you when you're dealing with tribal channels. Now, this is from request of some people from my channel and they wanted me to counterpunch it. Now, I'm not going to disagree with everything because you can't disagree with everything, you know, unless somebody's just telling 100% lies, which that can happen, but not all the time. But anyway, let's move on. And he is preparing for it in the gym. That's my understanding. So when you have somebody like Deontay Wilder, regardless of what you think about his skill set, a guy that can defend a major world championship belt 10 times successfully coming to the amateur, coming to the pros at age 21 and become a bronze medalist. That tells you that that man has talent. And so he's given the credentials of Deontay Wilder. Of course he would. Um, let me start by agreeing with what I agree with. It is impressive that a guy that comes from that age 21, that's way too late, right? Not could I, I can't say way too late, but that's very late to be starting any type of boxing, okay? So that is an accomplishment. And I think people need to really look at that and understand the significance of that, okay? Deontay Wilder was 21 years old, you know, and then he's starting to, maybe he was 19 when he put on some gloves, but he was 21 when he went to the trials, okay? So, um, or was he 21? He might've been 21 years of age. So I think what he's saying is you got a guy like Deontay Wilder that pretty much had to learn what he knew how to do on the flyer, what somebody taught him, you know, and he did, he did win up. He did get to a certain level to be beat. Now you have to give him that. Yeah. He, Romanoff, Evgeny, yeah, beat him, destroyed him, whatever. But he, he got beat. He got high enough to get beat to be where he is in the Olympic trials. OK, so to be bronze, at least he placed. So to look at that in a positive light, Fanon's right. He did at least do all that with the limited knowledge that he had, went all the way up there. And he got so far with that until someone defeated him. So that is true. Now, does it take talent? I don't know. I'm not sure about talent. Maybe if you want to call talent like physicality, you know what I mean? Or skill. I wouldn't say skill, but I would say more likely physicality and reflex. Because Deontay Wilder is not a slow dude. He's, he's very strong. He's very tall. He's lanky, right? He's very powerful, right? He can punch with that right hand, the one hand that um, Mr. Breland taught him how to throw. Right. And he knows how to throw that punch and land that punch without winging these shots or people call windmilling. So he was able to do that. And it got him a very, very long way. Ten title defenses and all that. Well, let's talk about that for a minute. Look who he fought with those ten title defenses. So you, we have to be real about everything. We can't just overlook certain stuff and give everything uh, positive to him because you have to look at really what he did.
His major flaw was who have you fought? Who have you beat? And the guys that he beat, they weren't, the 10 title defenses were who? He drawed against Fury, he lost to Fury. Okay, that's nine. He fought Ortiz twice, which was the greatest accomplishment in his career. You have to take two away, that's seven. Who else? Spilka, that's six. Um, Chris Ariola, that's five. Eric Molina, that's four. And uh, Dunapas, that's three. And then two more people that we probably have not. Well, Gerald Washington, that's one. And then someone else. But mind you, these guys were very, very low. They weren't in the top anything. Okay, so that's the thing. Okay, so we went down the line of the people that he fought. And the people that he fought didn't really have too much of resistance or opposition. He didn't fight Ortiz three, four years ago. Okay, he didn't fight, well, four or five now. Okay, he didn't fight the Povetkin because, you know, that got shitty. Okay, and when he fought a guy with Tyson Fury, you would argue Tyson Fury, like he said, he, he's done, he can't punch. Well, he went 12 rounds with you. <laughs> Regardless if you think you knocked him out or not, he still went 12 rounds with you. So you let a guy that got off the couch from being 400 pounds go 12 rounds with you. Hmm. Okay, because even if he would have missed the count, that would have still been the story. The story would have been, man, Wilder, you, you beat Fire Fury, but dude, it took you 12 rounds to get that dude out of there. He bullshitted you for 12 rounds. And then outlanded you for 12 rounds. Going into the 12th round for 11 so to speak, because you don't never count the one that he got knocked out in, right? So there you go. So the 10 title defenses, starting late, which you got to give him credit for, because, you know, he had to learn things later in life versus muscle memory and things he could have learned when he was uh, younger. And it's, you know, he would have been, his skills would have been developed because someone would have taught him how to actually box instead of, hey, I know how to fight a little bit. And I know how to throw the right hand. Okay, anybody that knows how you sneak a person or how you throw a right or how you catch catch somebody with the right hand. It's it's one of the it's 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 a street reflex. People need to understand the difference. So you can reach out and jaw somebody quick. That's a reflex. And that's pretty much what he if you look at Wilder's fight, look at the Ortiz fight. I showed you guys uh, an example of that yesterday when Ortiz when he caught Ortiz. Ortiz didn't know where he was at. OK, so but he because he snuck Ortiz. That really doesn't that doesn't mean you have skill, boxing skill. That just means you have a good reflex, you know, fast twitch muscle speed. OK, reaction time. He has those things. But you chop that up as uh, uh, under physicality, not necessarily skill or talent. Let's move. Let us go forward. That man has experience, whether or not you like his skill set or not. There ain't but a handful of people on this planet that got a chance of beating them. Many people say, well, so what, Martin or Fanon? So what? He already beat him. Right. But look at what has happened since. Tyson Fury gaining weight could mean a couple things. It could mean a lack of discipline or it could mean just a result of his inactivity. So we move forward with uh, the two reasons Fanon came up with. The inactivity or um, a lack of discipline. Now, you know, it's strange to say he is actually right about the lack of discipline because I think where he's going, I mean, I haven't heard this before, but I think where he's going is Someone with mental health issues, if they accomplish something great, and then if 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 this is what it is, because what we've learned from Fury, he beat Vladimir Klitschko. He did that shit one time. Okay, he drawed with Ty, he drawed with Deontay Wilder the first time, then he drawed with him again. I mean, sorry, he beat him in the second fight. Right now, he hasn't fought since. Now he's supposed to have another fighter. He didn't fight the other fighter, so everybody's like, right. And you see him saying things about not being active, talking about other people, and then he's not excluding himself from that. 
equation. So pretty much if you're not excluding yourself, you're including yourself. So that's a bad thing. OK, that's not a good thing at all. All right. Um, it could probably be one of those situations where maybe he may lost desire due to lack of discipline because the lack of discipline is the lack of desire because you've done something. You, you've stopped a guy that had 10 title defenses that had the WBC. A lot of people thought he had it ransom for a while. Right. And he had it for five years and he stopped that. OK. How do we know this is this isn't a situation where he might hit another snag? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because if he needs certain things to keep smaller goals that he needs to always look forward to for his mind to operate properly. How do we know that? That's what I think Fanon's getting at. But let's check it out. Either way, it is problems for him. Now, let's just assume that this weight gain is real, right? Now, some people are going to come out and say, oh, you didn't see, blah, blah, blah. It's not that big a deal. I'm hearing that it's a big deal. Okay, so why would that happen? One of two things can happen. And he is somebody that has mental health issues that he acknowledges. He, has had, he is someone that has um, substance abuse problems in the past and that he has acknowledged. And when you have, mental health issues and or and or substance abuse problems you will have those problems for the rest of your life now as he stated like i thought okay and i didn't even hear that part he's worried uh, for, for one for one i don't know where he said i hear it's a big deal well i don't, I don't know where you heard that from just say, I believe it's a good deal. Not, I heard it's a good deal. Because maybe you didn't hear shit. <laughs> don't say, you don't disguise I hear for your, for actuality belief. You know, you believe it's a bad, uh, or a bad thing. Because Tyson Fury's gaining weight. Because maybe he's not training to satisfy the mental illness. Because he has to. Based on mental illness. Based on drug abuse. And when you have them, you have them for the rest of your life. Fanon's right about that. It's clever. And the way he's wording it, I mean, but he's right. He Look, he will always be, if you admit something and you have diagnosed, okay, if he was an alcoholic or a drug addict or whatever, or a mental health issue, because see, a lot of that shit is really uh, kind of like chopped up into one thing. You know, I had mental health issues and I needed drugs to deal with the mental health issues instead of getting on some type of drug that was prescribed to me. But still, either one, because you could end up being both. OK, because I have a, a, a sibling that had a wife that, yes, yeah, she had mental health issues and she did other things, recreational things when she should have been on prescribed things. OK, so I know I speak from experience. So um, so I know this. So but he's right. When you are diagnosed with mental health issues, you got that shit for the rest of your life because it ain't going to be another time like, hey, I beat it. You can control it kind of like diabetes or high blood pressure, like any other thing. Um, physical or mental imbalance you can do that but at the end of the day you still got that shit <laughs> so what he's saying is if you let this go without being treated and that's what he's afraid of or whatever i don't know if he's really afraid but that's the topic if he is getting um out of shape or whatever it may be due to what he's not practicing because tyson fury has came forth and said he does not do or take prescribed medication his exercise is prescribed medication. So, you know, in theory, if you do see Tyson Fury fat or whatever, you might start thinking like, OK, maybe he's not working out and maybe he's going back down that slope. So but anyway, let's check this out. Let's listen. That is just what it is. And I can speak on both of those personally. I've had issues where my head wasn't quite, quite right. If I ignore that, right, over time, there's a chance that, I, that it can happen again, right? Now, for me, it's not nearly as extreme as what Tyson Fury has described, but yet I still understand my limitations in that regard. Also, very close associates that have substance abuse problems. When they go into alcohol, Alcoholics Anonymous or they go into any other of these, you know, some other type of AA program, the first thing that they say is, 
look, you have to understand that this is a lifetime battle for you. This is not something that you can do for three days, for three months, for three years. So I get what he's saying. His concern is the weight gain. And like we counterpunched, basically saying the same thing. Um, but I think <clears throat> as far as Wilder goes, <clears throat> um, because I, I know this is getting lengthy, I'll, I'll, <clears throat> I'll do another volume. But what he's saying from what I heard, okay, and I'm, I'm probably about halfway through, and I'll do the other half later on. What he's saying it is Tyson Fury may have a snag. He may have a problem. Now, what that problem is, I don't know. Again, see volume two for that because I will do a volume two. You guys tell me what you think about Fanon's video and this countering video on Fanon. Of course, please subscribe. And you guys have been counterpunching. Peace.